What's up guys, Raymond here with episode 3 of our financial statement analysis videos for the uh, German, German German industrials companies. Uh, I hope you guys have seen episode 1 and number 2. Uh, episode 1 was Airbus and episode 2 was Bass. Um, this is episode 3 and I hope you guys enjoy this one also if you've seen number 1 and 2. Uh, without further ado, let's get into the key ratios. Uh, what we do in these financial statement analysis videos, in case you're new, is we analyze the top 3 financial statements relevant to a company, those being the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. We also pick out the key factors of each statement. For example, in the cash flow statement, we look at the total dividends paid to shareholders, uh, as well as capital expenditures um, and how it manages its debt. Uh, in the balance sheet, we look at the total liabilities compared to the total assets uh, to see how leveraged the company is. Um, uh, we look at key factors like that of each financial statement to uh, to get an overall picture of how the company is performing um, uh, and how it's relevant to how how the company is performing operationally and how it reflects in the stock price and how it reflects in the stock performance uh, as well as uh, trying to paint a picture of how the company will do or perform in the future near term and short term uh, sorry near term and long term and uh, uh, decide. Uh, uh, to a degree how well so uh, how great a company is uh, a, a, as an investment uh, so without further ado we're going to start with the key ratios the market cap which is the overall price of a company um, uh, com which is uh, based on its share outstanding shares so the amount of divisible parts of the company available to the public to buy um, multiplied by the price of each of those units um, which is the market cap the market cap is 227 million which is incredibly small we always say a market cap of one at least 1 billion euros is a good start uh, the revenue figure is um, um, the revenue figure which is the overall sales of the company in one financial period in this case 2021 financial period which is the last financial period was 1.343 billion euros which is um, almost seven times the um, uh, overall price of the, the stock which is quite scary um of course what would be worse would be if the company's pr net profit was positive to a large degree or at least 10 percent. that would be even even um quite more difficult to fathom because that would mean the net profit of one uh, uh the net profit in one year would be higher than the, than the uh, overall price of the company but i doubt that would be the case um so the dividend yield doesn't show i guess it's uh, zero uh, which the dividend yield is the overall pr uh, cash that the company pays out in one, one financial year from its net earnings uh, to shareholders. The PE ratio, which is the price divided by the earnings per share, was twenty five point eight one. The earnings per share, which is how many how much net profit the company makes, um, sorry net income the company makes uh, divided by the amount of shares outstanding, was thirty four cents. And compared to the overall price of the company, that isn't too large, but it's. Uh, it's something it's definitely uh above five percent so or around five percent anyway um so the beta level which is one which is perfect the overall uh average of a company's stock um should be around one uh which uh, the net the sorry the beta level is the overall risk level of the stock so how volatile how the company uh the company's performance has been uh, over the past financial year the so let's start with the net income sorry the income statement the income statement for bauer uh, in the 2019 financial year shows that the company's revenue figure was 1.47 billion euros the net uh, income um, was negative which is not good uh, the 2020 financial year shows that the company's revenue figure decreased by uh, not too much of a degree but quite but to a significant enough degree that can be seen in the, in the chart. Uh, also, the net income figure was around zero. The net income figure for 2021 was also zero, but the revenue figure managed to increase by also the same amount that the company, uh, that is, sorry, that the, net income, sorry, the, that the revenue figure decreased by from 2019 to 2020. Uh, let's get into the cash flow statement. Um, and then we're going to look at the balance sheet. I want to get into the cash flow statement first in this video because I want to see how the company manages its cash, uh, considering that its net income was almost zero in the past few financial years. So, the 2019 financial year, the company managed to have a negative net income of one point, sorry, eleven point three two million euros. The operating activities cash flow was one hundred sixty eight million euros, and the invested activities cash flow was negative seventy five million euros. One hundred and one million euros was spent on capital expenditures. Um, the finance and activities, the company managed to lose one hundred twenty million euros. 
financial and cash flow items and dividends paid were 2.97 million euros um, the issuance of stock uh, which was eliminating eliminating debt was 85 million euros negative so it managed to eliminate 85 million euros worth of debt which is really good foreign exchange effects which is just the effects uh, as a result of the uh, currency inc uh, currency value increase which is in this case is the euro was 1.66 million euros gain and the net change of cash for 2019 was 25 million euros so 2021 net change in cash was negative 4.72 million euros and 2020 was 8.4 million euros so the 2020 financial year was only the, the only year that the company had a positive net change in cash but it doesn't necessarily it doesn't necessarily signify anything bad it just it depends on how the company manages its cash it was it is definitely good uh uh conclusively to have a positive net change in cash because it shows that the company is at a lower risk of a capital adequate at capital adequacy risk um, but yeah, so let's get into the balance sheet, which is the last of the financial statements we're going to look at in this video. Uh, the total current assets was the 935 million euros, and the total equity is 381 million euros. So the overall value that the company, sorry, that the shareholders would have if the company were to sell off all of its uh, assets uh, and uh, eliminate all of its liabilities, uh, it would be left with 381 million euros. So that's still definitely a net net investment because the company's uh, current price is 227 million euros. So there'll be a, um, a lot of, uh, about a third of the value, uh, about 100 million euros, uh, specifically 160 million euros would be given out uh, freely to shareholders or to a shareholder if they wanted to purchase the entire company. So that's definitely a good thing. So the company, I definitely think, is a good company to invest in, especially in this current period uh, or at this particular time, simply because you'll be buying the entire company if you wanted to buy the entire company at a 33% discount um, to its uh, total equity. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, I'm going to close this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it, and I hopefully we'll see you in episode four.